guys we have reached 1k subscribers thank you guys thanks a lot for your kind support and without you guys we wouldn't have achieved this mark we hope your continued support so that we could reach more and more heights and i could assure you that we'll definitely post good contents in the future as well and as a part of this 1k subscriber mark we have actually decided to start two new groups one in telegram and the other one in whatsapp so the kind of aim of these groups is that we could learn and grow each other so through fruitful discussions related to the contents that i post in the channel we can actually um, uh, contact discussions and we can actually learn and grow each other so um, i have put the link in the description section so post the video join them right away and come back in here so once again thank you guys thank you from the bottom of my heart for your kind support so with that being said in this video we are going to be showing you how to filter a table based on the user input in javascript so we will not be using any sort of extensions or libraries we'll do all those things in pure vanilla javascript and yeah without any further let's jump right into it Alright guys, so what I have here is a project directory, filter.js, and inside that I have created an index.html file. Now we'll st start from scratch. So first of all, I'll make a, a table with some dummy data in it. So um, uh, I'll quickly make that and come back. So we have done that, we have created the table. Now I'll, I'll just show you the output in my live server there. So I'll open with live server and you can see that table here. Now I'll give a little bit of styling there. So up at the top in the style tag, I'll actually uh, give some border. So table and the headings and data, I'll, I'll put a border of um, maybe a two pixel with um, a solid black. So with that being said you can see that it's nicely uh, bordered now yeah now, now I'll actually uh, make an input tag here so up at the top in the body tag I'll actually make an input uh, maybe input a uh, text so input text and uh, I will we'll actually give a name and ID of search and uh, I'll put a placeholder there so search uh, I'm sorry for the typo yeah, that's it. Now we have that there and I'll put some margin uh, bottom at the input there. So I'll say input and margin uh, maybe bottom of uh, 10 pixel. And yeah, that's it. That's all about it. Now we'll start writing some JavaScript. So I'll not be making any external uh, script there, but instead we'll, we'll do at the bottom in the script tag. So the script tag will actually First of all, we'll fetch the table as well as the input element here. So I'll just say const and the maybe I'll say search input. Search input is equal to document dot uh, get element by ID. Now the ID we have provided is the search itself. Now we'll uh, fetch the actually we don't want to fetch the entire table. Instead, uh, we'll actually uh, fetch the rows here in the T body because we will be actually filter filter the table based on the first uh, the table data the John Do which means the name uh, itself. So we'll only take these rows into consideration. So in order to fetch that uh, rows there, I'll actually call this as rows is equal to. Um, I'll use the query selector all so I'll say query selector all and in here we'll actually uh, first fetch uh, the uh, we'll, we'll fetch all the rows inside the T body right so we'll say T body and inside that we'll fetch all those TRs so with this one uh, let me check whether um, all those things are working so I'll just say console.log rows and if I go into the console uh, yeah, I can actually see those three rows there. So that's totally working fine. Now, the next thing we'll, we'll be actually doing is adding an event listener to the search input here. So uh, I'll just comment this out and um, we, we'll actually add the uh, event listener to the search input there. So search input, add event listener. 
Now the kind of listener is key up. So the when when the user uh, typed something and if he releases, then that's a key up stroke there, a key up even there. So yeah, uh, if the key is up, then we'll actually execute a function. So that function will uh, we, we can actually use arrow functions and all, but we'll we'll stick with the regular functions there. So I'll say event. That function will would receive an event. Now, for those of you who are not aware about these things, these event listeners and all, uh, let me just quickly show you the event there. So you can see that if I type in something, you can see a keyboard event occurred. Now in the keyboard event, we have actually the target there. So the target is nothing but which uh, element actually made this event. So uh, which element actually, um, in this case, it will be like the search bar made this event. So in the target itself, we will have the, we can actually fetch the value there. So there will be a value prop, which is actually uh, whatever we typed in there. So we can see that J there. So that's what we typed in. So in order to fetch that, um, the, the whatever we typed in, I'll put, I'll make a const now, then I'll say Q is equal to, uh, we will actually say event dot target uh, dot value. So we'll get that value there. Now, uh, no, no, the next thing we have to do is actually filter uh, the table based upon the uh, whatever the user typed in. So uh, we'll loop through uh, this stuff, uh, this uh, rows there. Now there are a couple of ways of doing it, but I'll show you a simple way of doing it. Now this is also um, a common way and it's also efficient, no issues with that. Now um, we'll actually loop through uh, these rows and uh, if, if that row, if that particular um, table data starts with whatever the user typed in, we'll actually, um, if that is not the case, we'll actually uh, use some styling. So I'll make a display none, for example. So we'll, we'll show you that in, in a minute. So we'll actually loop through, in order to loop through that, I'll, I'll use for each. So rows, this rows dot for each. Now the for each actually receives a callback. So uh, it will receive each of the items. So maybe I'll say a row. Now the row here is actually, uh, if, if we console.log, you can see uh, what it is. So it is actually the uh, uh, kind of uh, each element. So if I type in A, you can see that three rows there actually showing there so it the row is actually the uh, the elements at each time so uh, the each row in this rows array so uh, with that being said now we'll, we'll actually uh, loop through we have looped through uh, this rows now the next thing we'll be doing is filtering so I'll just say like this row uh, dot I, I want to fetch this item right so we are filtering based on this this first one the name attribute there so I'll fetch I'll first fetch that one so I'll say a raw dot query selector mm, so I'll say query selector and we'll fetch uh, the TD right so I'll, I'll just say TD so it'll give you that name there now this TD I'll actually um, make that to lowercase because um, uh, now, before doing that, I, I want to actually fetch the content, right? Now, this one actually returns that element, but we need to actually fetch the content. So I'll say text content. Now I'll make that to lowercase so that uh, I, I also want to make this one to lowercase because um, uh, those things are case sensitive. So we need to make sure uh, uh, there's no errors if the user typed in caps or in small as well. So I'll make all those things to lowercase. Now, uh, then we'll actually say something like starts with. So if um, the content starts with whatever the user typed in, so starts with Q, if it, if it is the case, so the starts with actually give you a true or false, a Boolean. If it starts with, then it will give you true, otherwise it will give you false. So if it starts with, then um, we, we don't want, uh, yeah, yeah. if it starts with, then we want that row there. So otherwise, the otherwise condition, I'll make a ternary operator here. So the uh, I'll fill this one here. So for, for instance, uh, at present, I'll fill this as null. Now, if, if it is not the case, if it doesn't start with what the user typed in, then we actually get rid of that row. So for that, I'll, I'll just say that row dot style, I'll, I'll take the style 
display is equal to none so I'll just uh, hide that row there so with this being said it will actually do the trick now we have some something to fill in here that I'll, I'll be showing you so with, if we save that and if we starts to actually say J you can see that it is filtering now so if I say O then it actually filtered that as well so J Indo is gone the BART is gone now if I click back here you can see that it doesn't actually give you that values back now that's because of this null here so we need to actually make if, if the user uh, press back or like if the user reverts to the previous condition I mean uh, we need to actually make this to be display uh, display in the sense uh, visible so for that I'll say raw dot style uh, dot display is equal to we can actually make this to be nothing which means it will be visible or uh, I'll show you an alternative way so uh, we can check if this works so Joe J yeah, it's actually giving some yeah display of undefined yeah it, I'm sorry for the type again style so if I say J it actually filters me so O it actually filters again so if I press back button you can see that it actually filters everything and if I go into the elements you can see that um, in the T body you can see that it actually uh, uh, has uh, the, those uh, since, since we provided displays equal to an empty string it actually is saying the style uh, prop there so uh, we can actually uh, replace this one with a table row so the display is table row so if, if we uh, actually do the tr thing again we can see that it actually filters the stuff but this time uh, it is much cleaner we don't have that empty style there uh, we, we do have that table row there so uh, that's totally working fine and this is it this is one way of and I, I have said that this is one way of doing it there are a couple of other ways now this one seems to be very simple and very understanding and yeah and that's all about the filtering stuff and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and if you have any doubts or any sorts of suggestions please let me know in the comment section otherwise if you like the video please hit the thumbs up button and yeah that's it guys uh, thank you for watching if you haven't subscribed my channel yet please do subscribe my channel and click the bell icon near to it so thank you for watching we'll see you in the very next one